However, actually, it's kind of sad that I'm only a replacement for Sebastian Kmiecik, of, uh, who works with Andrzej Kolinski and who was uh, to give a magnificent, uh, I presume, talk about, the Kol about uh, Kolinski's group uh, CAPS force field, statistical force field for proteins. It's very sad that he couldn't come because he fell ill uh, right in the last minute, so he couldn't make it. But anyway, I try, I try to also to allude to, uh, to CAPS, uh, at least to, gi to give you some, some idea what it is. Okay, before, uh, so I'm from Gdańsk, as you can see. Uh, this, is, this is a nice picture, although small, of the, of the old town of Gdańsk. Uh, the river is Motlava, and here you uh, can see the landmark, which is the old crane from medieval times. Of course, it's, it's wooden, so it's, <laughs> it's not, re not really uh, the wood from medieval times, but it's reconstructed, but, uh, but the shape is the same. And before I start, let me acknowledge the, co uh, the co-authors of, uh, of this work. Uh, first of all, Adam Sieradz and Czarek Szczaplewski, who are here. Then Paweł, who isn't he he here. Stan, Anna, and Violeta. And, uh, my, uh, and my mathematician colleague, uh, Antek Augustinowicz, who did some of the derivations. Okay, I, I don't think I have to play uh, Colonel, Colonel von Zillergut from Good Soldier's Fake story, uh, who, uh, who explained to his, uh, to his junior officers what a sidewalk is, but uh, so I, I don't, I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna justify, it, uh, justify what, uh, why the coarse grain potentials are useful. But let me just uh, give you a quick, quick glimpse uh, how, how do we come from the old Elton model of a, this is a peptide, and we leave out the unnecessary net details, we come to something which is simpler. However, not, uh, not very much simpler, because uh, uh, as you can see, the interaction sites are no longer, sfer uh, no longer spherical. Well, and why, why are we doing this? Because uh, if, we, if we started uh, all atom simulations, so we, we would have to use uh, femtosecond order time step. Of course, we can go uh, uh, even up to 20 femtoseconds with good symplectic algorithm. However, this is not, uh, not a tremendous difference. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, even Anton supercomputer is not, able, not yet able to, uh, to do simulations which really even approach the folding of, uh, of real proteins. When we do coarse graining, we leave out the, um, some of the fast moving degrees of freedom and hopefully we start from here or e even from here, not, not from here. Okay, so uh, uh, Garrick Papuyan uh, has given a very good overview of the, uh, of course, game potential. So uh, I'll focus only on part, uh, on part of them, which are, which are essentially, according to his classification, the uh, uh, bottom-up uh, design potentials. Although they, uh, as I, uh, as I will show, they they do have some top-down elements. And there are two basic classes. Of course, uh, I leave out the, st the structure-based potentials, which, uh, which are very well covered in during this workshop, uh, so I hope that I don't have to, to repeat this. Um, the first class is the physics-based potentials, and the second is the, uh, are the statistical potentials. Uh, statist uh, phys the physics-based potentials uh, are based on kind of averaging over the first degrees of freedom, uh, either by directly smoothing the energy surfaces or by uh, taking, uh, by averaging uh, out uh, explicit non-essential de degrees of freedom. And actually I'll focus on this. Why the statistical potentials to, uh, to, this the, uh, to, to which the CAPS force field belongs, which I mentioned, uh, rely on database information on the uh, statistics de derived from the de database. Here is a chart of, uh, uh, of some, of course some arbitrarily selected. This, was my, this is my choice. I, I don't say that these are the most important potentials. So uh, the, uh, of, of the successful coarse grain potentials that, uh, that work for proteins or nucleic acids, so awesome, uh, covered by, uh, by Garrick yesterday. CAPS, this is statistical, this is physics-based essentially, although it, it, it contains some knowledge-based elements. Uh, Sim RNA, de developed by Janusz Bujnicki's group of, uh, of Warsaw, and this is a statistical potential to predict RNA structure and to simu simulate RNA dynamics. Martini, the physics-based potential, which does no prediction, but it's, ver it's very good to simulate the dynamic properties of uh, proteins and other biomolecules in, uh, uh, in uh, 
lipid and in water environment. Recently, it, ha it has been uh, uh, extended to nucleic acids. OPEP, uh, essentially the same, uh, 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 the same class, although it's, uh, it has more prediction power. And UNRES and uh, the, uh, the, uh, its extensions to nucleic acids and to, and to polysaccharides, which essentially has the, the same properties as, uh, and the same functions as CAPS. And uh, you can see that the web pages uh, from which to download or even from which uh, on which you can uh, 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 from which you can launch, uh, launch the, self, uh, uh, the servers are given here. And uh, for the recent review of um, uh, excellent review of um, uh, course game potential, I recommend uh, the review by uh, Sebastian Kmiecik at, uh, uh, at other also authors, including Andrzej Kolinski, which appeared uh, about one year ago. Okay, so let let me start with uh, cor uh, course game pot uh, 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 statistical potentials. Uh, or otherwise knowledge-based potentials, so database related, with CAPS and, as an example. And what do we do? Essentially, we extract a distribution fun function which is on the left, this dotted line. So, for example, using Lucene sidechain distances from uh, distance from the database. Then we figure out, uh, we figure out what this curve should look, uh, how this uh, what this curve should be if there was no interactions. Okay, so then we divide one by the, uh, by, by the other, uh, obtaining the correlation function, which looks like this, uh, which we can, by Boltzmann inversion, use directly. So this, this would be this, uh, the, the, this ragged curve, or we can fit an analytical expression to it. And either way is fine. So uh, people who work on lattice usually don't, uh, don't do anything with it, so they use it in the raw form. And people who work with in continuous space do the other, uh, do fit the analytical expression. Okay, so the CAPS model by uh, by Kolinsky group is consists of uh, simplifies the polypeptide chains to C alpha peptide group, C beta, and side chains from which the the name takes, and uh, uh, it uh, superposes the chain on a high resolution la lattice. So the method, so the, so the sampling method of choice is multi uh, is uh, Lattice Monte Carlo. Well, so there, are, as I said, there are four interaction sites: uh, cubic lattice and lattice Monte Carlo. Se uh, there are uh, as for the potentials, there are sequence independent short range potentials, with, uh, which essentially uh, prevent fr uh, prevent fr the, the uh, C alpha C alpha virtual bond fr to be too short or too long, and so on and so on. Uh, sequence is dependent short range potential. So these are the real potentials, hydrogen bonding potentials, and sequence, uh, sequence independent excluded volume long range potentials, so, so that the two side chains, for example, don't collapse on each other, and context dependent long range potentials or side chain interactions, which uh, uh, really make the, uh, the, uh, the protein. Okay, so uh, of course, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to run Monte Carlo, uh, they needed to define some, uh, some, more, some more collective moves than, uh, than just a single, be a sing single bead move. And uh, these are the, this is a glance of, uh, of sequence independent short range potentials. Sequence again, say sequence independent short range potentials. The potentials they, uh, they keep secondary structure. These are sequence independent short range potentials, uh, so they pre uh, prevent uh, too much crumpled structure. These are, uh, you can see here, these uh, statistical potentials used in the raw form. These are short range potentials th that are sequence dependent, so they are maybe like torsional potentials. And hydrogen bonding potentials, which essentially say that if I have a hydrogen bond here and a hydrogen bond here, there is an additional energy bonus to uh, 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 add it to, uh, to the equation. So, uh, so they, uh, they promote the formation of organized structures. And uh, this is actually my last slide about CAPS. So uh, you can, uh, uh, for the server, you can refer to this web page. And you can, using this, uh, their web servers, you can do docking. You can simulate the harmonic dynamic, kind of harmo harmonic dynamics of, uh, of a protein if you, if you input the, uh, the PDB structure. You can, uh, you can simulate folding with some, uh, some template-based uh, uh, aid. And you can si simulate aggregation. So, so much about this, and uh, I recommend you to, to read uh, Sebastian's, art, uh, Sebastian's paper and to consult their, uh, their web page. 
Okay, now let let me turn to to the uh, to the actual topic of my talk, to the physics-based potentials, and uh, I will just present uh, the way that we derive the physics-based potential uh, in in uh, our lab. So first of all, the actually the uh, the consensus is that the physics-based potential, the potentials originate from the potential potential of mean force of a, uh, of a system from which the degrees of freedom that we don't need, the, the y's, are averaged out, and the x's that we do need are kept. So, of course, it's, uh, this is the equation, and pictorially it can be described like this. So this is called either potential of force or restricted uh, free, uh, restrict free energy function. Either way, uh, either way is fine. Uh, what, I, uh, what is beautiful about this is that if we take this uh, free energy function or this potential of mean force and we, we compute the, proba uh, the probability density um, uh, of a coarse gain conformation, it is exactly the same, given, of course, the ideal, uh, 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 ideal PMF, as if we were using Oletton energy function. The free energy will be exactly the same. Well, it's, uh, it, it takes some uh, s uh, some thought to compute the to com compute the uh, the average energy because this is not the simple average of the potential of mean force to compute the heat capacity, but it's still feasible with the uh, uh, with this potential of mean force with, with our ideal cross grain energy function. Moreover, any uh, ensemble average uh, quantity which depends only on, on coarse grain degree, uh, degrees of freedom, for example, C alpha RMSD, can be computed exactly with this ideal free energy function, as if uh, we are using Oletton energy functions. Well, so now, uh, of course, now, now there's a big question. Okay, compute the, free, uh, the potential of mean force. But hell, that's that's actually a huge, a huge system. So why don't we d just do s uh, simulations uh, at all atom level? It it would be less expensive actually. <laughs> so okay, so we have to do uh, something about this uh, this potential of mean force. We have to simplify it. Of course, we uh, we have to find an approximation to make it tra treatable. There are various ways. So uh, one way is what Garrick presented, the cumulant fitting. The other way is uh, Greg Voth's force matching. We invented another way, which, uh, which we called factor expansion. So there are several steps. The first one is definition of the coarse grain sites. And this is actually the top-down approach, because this is, an, an, uh, this is an arbitrary choice. And this is, uh, this, this is inherent in all pot, uh, coarse grain potential. For then, we partition the energy, the energy sites, uh, site-wise, so, uh, so the energy of interactions of the atoms within a site, between, the between two sites, uh, within a cluster of three sites, and so on, because there are multi-body terms in all the pot potentials as well. Uh, we, don't, uh, we don't need to resort to quantum mechanics. We have polarization, which is a beautiful uh, multi-body term. It depends uh, basically on, all the <laughs> on the positions of all the atoms. And the reason is that we ignore the electrons. We average uh, over the, uh, out the electron degrees of freedom, even at all atom level. So then we factorize the PMF into Cubos cluster cumulant function. And this is actually the essential steps. One of the, the first essential step. The second essential step is to the derivation of the approximate ep expressions for the factors. This is very important because the factors not only depend on the distance between the sites, but also depend on orientation. I will I will uh, I will expand more uh, more on this in uh, in the um, uh, in later in my talk. Then the we parameterize the expression. So for the we can use even uh, even knowledge based uh, database information to do this. But uh, of course, preferably we use uh, quantum mechanical calculations of the simplified system. And then this is uh, the, uh, so the first step was was the top down step. This, uh, the last step is also the top down step. We calibrate the force field, and this is the essential step. Everybody does it to uh, to fold like some training proteins, or to uh, represent to uh, uh, like in Martini to reproduce thermodynamic quantities. So this is a top down step, and this is a top down step. Uh, actually, I I cannot see any other uh, any uh, any successful constant potential which which doesn't have this or this. Okay, so let me let let me uh, now cover the, uh, simultaneously the, f the first two steps, and let's let's have a fragment of a polypeptide chain. So actually, this is the pressing ring of the oxytocin molecule. Okay, so I I said that Andres will be the example. So in Andres, we have the interaction sites, which are peptide groups, 
and sidechain centers. And, the anchor, uh, and we anchor the peptide groups not uh, in the centers of, of mass, but at the C alpha. C alphas are not interaction sites. Okay, so here now we assign the atoms to the, uh, to the centers, and now we partition the energy. So first of all, of course, we, we, we have this energy function. Axes are the coarse grain degrees of freedom, so will be the positions, uh, positions of the side chains, uh, side chain centers uh, and uh, C alphas, because if we have that, uh, the, the C alphas we and assume that a peptide group is in the middle, we have the position of, of, uh, of the peptide group. So first of all, we uh, uh, first of all we uh, treat the internal energies within a site. Okay, so that's that's easy. Then we have to treat the energies of uh, the interactions of the atoms that belong to different sites. That's also easy. Of course, we can continue with this because, uh, as I said, even at all atom level, we we do have multi multi bodies there. So generally, there will be, there will be terms encompassing even the whole system at all atom level. I mean, okay. So uh, generally, it can be written like this. So we have uh, we have a little z, which uh, which encompasses all the degrees of freedom that we want to average over, and the axis, which encompass uh, which encompasses all the coarse grain degrees of freedom of uh, of the cluster of coarse grain si site involved. Okay. So now, so uh, now, now we have partitioned the energy. We have defined our coarse grain model. We have partitioned the energy. So now let's go to the next step, to the factorization of the PMF into uh, into Cubos cluster cumulant function. Uh, the theory was uh, li laid out by Ryogo Kubo in 1962, and uh, Cubo cluster cumulant functions cumulant functions are not uh, the same as Cubo clusters cumulants, which are the expansions of uh, of uh, Cubo cluster cumulant functions, basically. We uh, write our potential of mean force f of x as a sum of the terms that depend on uh, on single axes. So these are with, uh, within site interactions and also interactions between the two sites. Both of them are first order because a, these are actually potential of mean force. For example, of uh, of a, uh, of a uh, single uh, virtual peptide bond. Which is which can stretch, and uh, bit, uh, of the two side chains in water that are that are interacting. So these are uh, factors uh, factors which act uh, actually are uh, the first order factors. Now come the second order factors, which below uh, which depend uh, de depend on the on the positions of uh, of uh, three coarse grain sites, and these are actually multi body effects. Even if our uh, all atom energy is uh, is pairwise. Uh, these terms will appear. Uh, there might also be th uh, third order factors, uh, three body, so these are three body terms of order two. Not three, not, uh, so, so actually I prefer to, uh, to use the, uh, the or uh, this order, which is the order of interaction coupling, not that, not that this is both uh, second order terms and third order terms, Two body term, three body terms, because uh, here we can uh, can can have uh, actually third order terms uh, will uh, will arise if we if we move to, uh, to to the third order and if we assume that i is equal to l, this will be this will be third order terms with uh, with three bodies, and uh, then we have multi body terms, of course, and uh, the trick is that we and as you can see, all these terms are computed. As uh, from uh, from the potentials of mean force of some subsystems. Okay, the trick is that if we if we have, for example have the third third order terms, we actually have to couple, for example, to, uh, only the local interactions. Not uh, we don't have to consider everything. So uh, uh, so so the, uh, so the trick is that now we have to decide where to cut. Usually, order three is enough. Okay, so examples. So these are these are the examples of the first order term, and we have a single body. So, for example, virtual bond stretching. This is the interaction for of, for example, two side chains. And here we have uh, potential like this, potential of mean force. Of course, this is R, uh, C alpha arginine si um, uh, potential, so it is multimodal because arginine uh, side chain is a complex side chain. And this is the like the potential of mean force of the interactions of two uh, of two side chains in water, and 
for the for the uh, for the third order terms, we consider the coupling of uh, of this uh, of the local interactions between between the first two bodies, like the the uh, the red and the purple. Then the local interaction energy of the purple and the blue. So you can see that there's no in energy of interaction between the red and the uh, and the blue. So only the coupling of this, and we have to subtract from this the uh, 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 the components. What emerges? You can be surprised, but but is a torsional potential of the for the rotation about the virtual bonds. Uh, by the way, in 1982, uh, 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 Shurian and Kertész published a very nice paper in which they demonstrated that the all atom torsional potentials uh, can be obtained by, uh, by s uh, using second order perturbation expansion of the, of the bond orbitals, of the localized bond or uh, orbitals, of the energy over localized bond orbitals, and, they, uh, and, uh, uh, and these are exactly the second order perturbation terms. So this, uh, there, there's a very, very close analogy to this. Okay, uh, so uh, the multi-body terms appear only when the, uh, the secondary variables are shared between some of the sites that enter the, uh, enter the, the respective cluster cumulant. So, for example, here we have no coupling, and actually the, there will be only uh, first-order terms. Uh, they, they will be split into first order. Here we ha do have coupling. Here we do have coupling, because, because we have the energy of interaction between blue and yellow, and yellow and... Uh, and uh, light blue. So here we have three three yellows. These are they are sti uh, these are only the uh, like the local interaction energies between between the uh, bet between the pairs of sides. But there, the coupling is because of shared degrees of freedom. So we can uh, we can very uh, very well v visualize this. Uh, for example, looking looking at the Big Bang. So uh, uh, for an observer who doesn't know the clockwork. Well, it's, it might be a mystery why the hands are moving uh, um, in a concerted way. But when we, when we look inside, we know why, immediately. Okay, so let me, let me go now to the uh, derivation of uh, approximate ex expressions. And this is actually the essential step, because it uh, provides the correct uh, dependence on orientation of the sites. Okay, so the first, uh, first of all, we can use the cubo. Uh, uh, Cumulant, general cumulant uh, expansion of the cluster cumulant functions. So examples are here. So this is essentially this is the mean. This is uh, uh, for, for for example, this is the mean. This is the variance, and this is the kurtosis from statistics. <laughs> nothing, nothing mysterious. And how? But how do we derive this expression? Because of course we can uh, we can say okay, these are the cumulants, but how do we get uh, do we get them? What uh, what verbs to keep when uh, when we average the all atom energies and the principles? What was uh, the inscription from uh, fr from a Platon Academy that nobody who is ignorant uh, of geometry may ever enter here? <laughs> so we should we should uh, we should mind the geometry of this uh, of the uh, of this fine grained degrees of freedom. I, they, uh, this geometry is not visible when we. Uh, uh, when we do the averaging, but it is, uh, but it appears in the orientation dependence of the terms. Okay, so for luckily, when we consider polymers, actually, well, uh, the obvious degrees of freedom to the to average about is the uh, is the virtual uh, is the rotation angle about the virtual bonds. Of course, this is a strictly rotation because, uh, and actually, uh, only the first uh, the first lambda is free. The other, one, uh, the other uh, if we keep the strict uh, valence geometry, then we actually uh, have only a, a choice out of two uh, two possibilities. But okay, because the potentials are continuous potentials, so we can we can say that this is just a strictly rotation. Okay, and uh, we c uh, also we can uh, we, we can notice that if there's no external field then the energy will depend only on the distances between the, uh, between the atoms. Not between the sides, but between the atoms. We can always write, uh, write uh, the energy function like this, that we, we have the position of nuclei and we have the energy. Okay, so, uh, so, uh, so now the trick is how to, uh, given, for example, le let's take two atoms, one of site I, atom, uh, like uh, atom K of site I and atom L of site J capital, and let's express 
the, uh, the distance, or rather the square of the distance of this atom, as a function of lambdas, and of course of the uh, of the orientation of the um, uh, of the virtual bonds. So this is this is actually like uh, like roasting marshmallows. We rotate. Uh, okay. So it is it is possible to obtain these expressions, as, uh, and as you can see, the the distance is uh, ca can be expressed in uh, in the distance between in the in uh, the square of the distance between the two centers. Something which doesn't depend on lambda and uh, something which depends on a single lambda, and something which depends on two lambdas. Uh, there are several phase angles involved here, and these phase angles, one, one phase angle is, uh, is actually the angle of rotation of, uh, of a, an, an atom from uh, uh, when lambda is zero. So this, uh, this uh, basically encodes chirality. And the other ones are the basically the angles, uh, the angles of rotation of the reference system of the second side in the coordinate system of the, of the first side. So uh, actually, the, uh, actually the, this psi, this uh, lowercase psi and uppercase psi gives, uh, gives the, the most of the head, uh, uh, headache <laughs> when, the, when de deriving the expressions. But anyway, uh, I, I will not uh, elaborate on this. But anyway, when we now we compute the energy moments, we, we can we can notice that we have the derivatives of the uh, of the energy of the energy moments over the over the squares of the distances computed at the uh, at the point of the at the distance between the centers of the sides. Essentially, this is a number for a given coarse gain configuration. This is a number, or th this depends only on r, and here. The orientational dependence can be obtained by integrating the powers of the f's and of the g's, basically. So it's very easy because they have cosines. So if there's a dangling cosine or dangling sign outside, then the integral will always be zero. So only when we have, we have a product law of, uh, of, uh, of two terms with the same lambda, then, the, uh, the, then will the, uh, the, uh, the term will be non-zero. Okay, so uh, to cut a long story short, uh, when we use this formalism, we can find out uh, the, uh, the average expression of the interactions uh, for ch uh, if the groups are charged. So these are the first order factors, for example, these are the two peptide groups which are isolated from each other, and we just mine the, the, their orientation. We average over lambda, and uh, we exactly retrieve the, uh, uh, retrieve the expression which can be obtained by averaging, uh, averaging the, the, uh, the energy, or rather the square of the energy, because now we have the second lambda which doesn't vanish, of uh, interacting uh, of the dipoles of the peptide groups. But uh, actually, we don't need the concept of the dipoles in this formalism. Okay. So, uh, but actually, what uh, what is uh, uh, what is most most important uh, is uh, are the cap coupling terms. For example, if we if we have the uh, if if we couple the two Gs, so we uh, so so now now we have two interacting sites. What comes out? We uh, that the second uh, the, the second mixed cumulant. So the we couple the inter uh, the interaction uh, to uh, two local interaction energies, uh, which share one unit. So it comes out that we have just uh, just integral over two Fs. And these are the torsional potentials. What is very important that uh, when we compute this uh, torsional potential, this is just the first cumulant because, of course, it's possible to derive the, the complete expression for this torsional potential. But we, uh, but what is more most important is that we no we don't just have maybe I skip until until here. We don't just have the dependence on the virtual bond dihedral angle, but we also have the multiplication by the thetas, by the virtual, uh, virtual bond planar angle. And this is very good, because actually if the, uh, of course, in all atom force fields, it doesn't happen that the, the angle goes to 180 degrees, unless we have an acetylene or cyanide or like nitrile or something like this, which has to be treated separately. But here, uh, but in coarse gain force, force, uh, force fields, it does happen. And of course, when one of the theta is close to 180 degrees, then, well, gamma becomes uh, close to undefined. So, but then the potential goes to zero and we don't have any problem. So the, this is actually quite an unexpected result. Does it happen? For example, let's take alanine alanine tor torsional potential. And we can see that if we have just, uh, uh, if, if, if we have the average torsional potential, so it has like an average shape. 
So it's neither uh, it neither neither tells us that the alpha helices are stable nor the beta sheets are stable. Uh, maybe beta sheets are should be a little bit more stable. But when we plug in the de the dependence on theta, the blue curves is for large theta li uh, theta lighting beta sheets. Then we can see that only extended conformations are possible. But uh, but for alpha helices there is uh, there, there are minima. The minimum will correspond to right-handed alpha helix is a little bit lower than uh, that uh, correspond to left-handed alpha helix, and alpha helix also becomes a minimum. Okay. Well, so uh, again, cutting the long story short, uh, we we can uh, so so thi uh, so this is already the dependence, uh, the map. Uh, of uh, computed numerically of the torsion potential, so we can see that uh, that there is a dependence on theta and on gamma. Uh, I uh, I only present the section with theta one equal to uh, theta two. This is the statistics from the PDB, and except for for uh, for the fact that of course uh, helices are and uh, overrepresented in uh, in the PDB database, so we have an additional minimum. This looks quite similar to this. Moreover, if we expand the uh, the uh, energy. Uh, the, the potential energy curve of the terminally blocked uh, uh, alanine residue into into Fs and Gs, and then we compute the sec uh, just the mixed cumulant. We get this, which of course is not perfect like this, but uh, li like the correct curve or like the uh, like the correct surface or like the surface from the PDB. But still, it's topologically similar, and there was no fitting involved here. Okay, so uh, th this this was one part of the story. The other part of the story that uh, was uh, is that when we uh, uh, when we want to compute electrostatic interaction, I, I told between peptide group, I told that the rotation is uh, is restricted. If we ignore this, okay, maybe let me. Uh, if we ignore this and we use just the mean f uh, mean f uh, field potential, we get something like this uh, from the uh, instead of a beta sheet. But if we if we uh, if we use the uh, if we do take into account the correlation, then we can find out that uh, actually uh, our uh, uh, the, uh, the electrostatic energy average electrostatic energy terms can be expressed in terms of the interaction of two dipoles, which depend on the on the gamma angle and of course of the th on the theta. So, okay. So uh, uh, of course there's there's. Uh, uh, there, uh, uh, there, there is one gamma, ang gamma angle that maximizes the resultant dipole moment. So this makes, uh, of course, this is a fictitious dipole moment, but this would maximize the, the resultant uh, dipole, dipole moment, which, which would maximize the, uh, the electrostatic interactions. And we, we find out that this, ma uh, this optimal gamma depends on theta 1 and theta 2, and if we now superpose the points from the PDB, we, can, we find out that actually it, uh, the, the respective surface very closely intersects this, uh, these points. So, so this means that, uh, that actually, uh, and this surface was co again computed, uh, computed from ab initial energy map of terminally blocked energy. There was no fitting involved. Okay, so how it works? So uh, without, uh, without considering the dependence of theta, we get uh, beta sheet like this. So it's way too... Uh, uh, to, uh, 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 way too compressed, way too shrunk, and with considering the dependence on, of, uh, on theta, not only on gamma, we get something like this, very nice. And on the other hand, it doesn't destroy the balance between alpha helix and beta sheet. Okay, so let me move quickly to the last step, to the calibration of the force field. So basically, uh, the targets for calibration are the, so this is the Anders for, uh, force field, which Tarek already presented. So basically, the, uh, the primary targets for calibration are the weights of the energy terms. So this is, we, we should uh, fine tune them to get, uh, to make a protein fold, a, t a training protein fold. And there are many approaches. Probably the earliest one was that invented by Crippen and, uh, and Snow. Uh, which max, uh, maximize the energy b the gap between the b between the native and uh, native structure and non-native structure. Then, of course, what uh, Garrick uh, uh, described uh, in his talk, the maximization of the ratio between the folding uh, transition temperature uh, of the folding transition temperature to the glass tra transition temperature. There are, there are also uh, many other ways. W uh, we invented something which uh, we, which we called hierarchical optimization. So this is basically this is the uh, minimization of the 
uh, maximization of energy gap and uh, of of the z-score, which is the ratio of uh, so the the difference between the mean of native and non-native to the over the variance of non-native uh, of the, the standard deviation of non-native. Uh, we've made it more extended, so so we uh, we partition the conformational space into na like native, partially native, with gradually unfolded protein, and uh, require that be below the folding transition temperature, the the order is like this. So the the lowest free energy has uh, has the native structure, and the highest um, uh, completely unfolded, and the the, the order is reverse after the folding transition temperature. However, all these methods have one drawback that you have to tell which structure is native and which is non-native and that's actually very hard job that's uh, that's mission impossible so just recently we uh, 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 we designed an algorithm which is based on maximum likelihood and um, we say okay let's fit uh, the weights let's fine-tune the weights or in another parameters, so that the uh, so that the maximum likelihood function, which is uh, which is of course the the sum over the logarithms of the of the computed probability distribution function, computed with the parameters, and uh, that uh, and uh, at the point where uh, where a conformation was observed, and let's let's maximize this. Okay. Facile dictu disficile factu, as the Romans used to say. Okay, you can do this when you have a point on the plane and you have an equation for a straight line. Because then you can, you can compute log p at, every, every, at, the, at the experimental point. When you have a conformational space, you can only simulate. So there's uh, pr practically no chance that your, uh, that your simulated uh, conformation will hit the exactly the experimental conformation. Okay, so, but uh, we found a way around. So, uh, we, when we, uh, we can't compute the exact probability, the uh, maximum likelihood function. Let's do like this. That let's, let's uh, put a Gaussian around each experimental point and say that, okay, that has, uh, well, that uh, a conformation can be a little bit, can be native, a little bit native uh, uh, and even a little bit non-native. So let's multiply the, uh, by by uh, uh, the uh, by a Gaussian uh, in the distance from the uh, from the experimental point. So so th then we we have the problem solved. Of course, this is polystatic classification because basically the confor uh, every conformation belongs to uh, to every experimental point a little bit, just a little bit. And of course, then we we can uh, uh, there's a machinery to to uh, to do optimization. So basically, we have to start from some weights on the other end the force field parameter, do simulations on training proteins, then uh, then minimize, uh, then maximize maximum likelihood. Again, I iterate until we are uh, we, uh, until we, we we say that well, this force field is already good. Okay, so this is how it works. So for tryptophan cage, this uh, this was uh, these were actually test calculations. So this is RMSD versus temperature curve, the red one. So you can see that this is terrible. I hope you agree that this uh, this is terrible behavior. Already in the first iteration, the green curve behaves reasonable. Okay, so then Pavel Klupa uh, used this method very recently. But uh, he uh, he used this method to optimize simultaneously the unless force field on seven proteins. Some of them were uh, uh, some some of the uh, of, of the structures were actually ensembles uh, su supplied by Stan OJ slab uh, from from NMR. So at uh, the temperature at the, at the temperature uh, folding temperature, the melting temperature, and, and above melting temperature. So this, uh, these are the, the cartoons. And okay, to cut again, to cut the uh, the long story short, so of course uh, these are the results of, tim of optimization. The best force field is here, so this uh, this is the the best force field, and uh, these are the RMSD. Of course, these are these are the the training set. This is the training set. So, so no wonder that uh, average ML RMSD uh, improved a lot. But also when we when we consider the uh, all uh, all other test proteins uh, so not used in the in the optimization uh, we can we can see that uh, that it uh, it also improved 
also uh, bo uh, both when we are we are considering like alpha beta and alpha pro uh, alpha plus beta proteins we got the improvement of course this this is not uh, like tremendous like that we we uh, we have every uh, average rmsd 6 and we, we we go down to 1 this is impossible probably we have to we would have to uh, modify the force field more than that but anyway this this is improvement and these are some spectacular examples uh, how the the new optimization technique worked so uh, this is the experimental structure and this is the structure obtained with the previous false, false field hierarchically optimized and this is optimi uh, this is the optimized st uh, the structure obtained with the maximum likelihood optimized false field so it looks like this maximum likelihood procedure really works much better than anything that we had before okay so to summarize i would ins maybe instead of all these points i i would reiterate uh, the inscription uh, mind the geometry so we have we we do need to take into account this uh, the, the the geometry of the fine grained degrees of freedom that are although they are lost on averaging but they still exist in our coarse grained energy function and ig ignoring the it May, uh, might uh, can lead to very serious errors. Okay, so uh, again, of course, Charek was already mentioned and uh, Adam was already mentioned, uh, some other people too. Of course, uh, um, I am collaborating pr uh, primarily with Harold Schraga, so he's uh, actually a lot of work has been done on this, has been done on the earlier version of Arnes, uh, has been uh, done, uh, done in, um, uh, in his lab with Juang Li of Kias. So he's uh, so so we are uh, so this is the stuff that Starek, pr Starek presented about the uh, uh, plugging in the knowledge based into information to Arnes, basically with Sylvia to uh, 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 in the Wefold initiative to uh, to use many many methods as many methods as possible to in a joint effort to uh, to predict the protein structure with anti on uh, well this this is a very exciting collaboration I like it very much uh, on the physics the physical aspects of protein pro uh, of protein folding particularly I love the, uh, I do love the solitons <laughs> which uh, w which uh, anti advertises and here are the former contributors and collaborators. And the financial support was primarily uh, pr provided by uh, Polish National Science Center, but also by Polish Ministry of Sciences, by NI uh, NIH and NSF. And the computer power uh, primarily is now we, now we use the uh, supercomputer center and at Warsaw and at Gdańsk, but also, uh, also local resources and, uh, and the resources in the US. And I would like you to thank uh, I, I would like to thank you for your attention.